All right, here we go with part two. Uh, there are going to be three parts for this critique. Uh, this will be the second, and let's leap right into it. Well, we have a uh, freeze shot of a flag in front of a building. It definitely froze it. The composition is um, pretty workable. You've got all these leading lines, everything pulling our view upwards. As you may recall, when we're forced to look up to something, we tend to give it more importance, um, a better sense of that uh, important element. The only thing I would do, as seems to be typical here, is that I would move in a little bit closer on this to really emphasize the flag and make the background pattern, which is very good but very strong in this picture. I would want to minimize that a little bit. Maybe a little depth of field that threw it a touch out of focus might have helped as well. But at least move in a little bit on it. But this is a nice capture. You definitely got the uh, issue of the colors, the red, blue, and white in the flag, and the yellow on the ball on the flagpole against this um, almost endless sea of bluish gray in the background. So good eye on this. You just need to crop in a little tighter. Now we have a uh, dog running free. This is a nice um, attempt at panning with it. You really got a sense of the action. Everything is moving a very slightly sped up shutter speed might have gotten his head sharp. When dogs run, or when anything runs for that matter, it's not a truly linear motion. A car going down a highway is linear, except for the wheels which are rotating. But when animals run especially, their body may be following along that linear path, but their head is going up and down. So that's going to blur a little slightly. So if you're going to be doing some shots like this, experiment a bit with different shutter speeds and see if you like the results um, a little better. See if they tell your story a little better. I would also, again, come in a little on this. I know that when things are moving and you're not really sure you're going to capture exactly what you want, then you give it a little extra room. You give it a little editing room around it. That, that's fine. Sometimes you have to do that, particularly in sports or action photography. But for the final, go ahead and crop into that part of the picture that really works. Make the final work for you. Now I have a skateboarder coming down a uh, road from somewhere. You can see by his expression, he's really concentrating. The sun flare is, is almost cliched perfect in this shot. It's, uh, it's really a nice capture of this particular image. You did a good job. Again, I would pull in a little bit tighter. You've got an extremely strong motion, both with his stare and the implied motion of the skateboarder going toward the right side of the screen. That's perfect. But it also means we don't need all of the left side of the screen because it doesn't tell us that much more. What's interesting is, did this guy behind him just crash and burn? Is he sitting on the ground? Um, or exactly what's happening? He's almost a distraction because of the strange pose of it. So be aware of those. It would be really easy to take out. You could uh, remove that in Photoshop if you wanted to. Wow, caught this guy right in the air. That's a very nice catch. It has the same issue that many of these motion shots have. When things are moving fast, you're just trying to keep the shot in the viewfinder. I understand that. But once it's there, particularly if you're shooting with one of the newer cameras that has a higher resolution, it's nice if you can keep all of the pixels because you've got better resolution when you do that for a final print. But if you can't, you've got the room to crop. If this is going on a website or it's going in a uh, sports magazine, you can afford to lose some of that resolution and make this a better composed shot. So I would move in and catch this part here so that he is really emphasized. The shot isn't about the sand, 
it's about the biker. So move in on it. But this is a very nice catch. Did a good job on this. Well, this is a fascinating blur, uh, essentially more of a double exposure than a blur. But it starts to work, um, in this case, kind of a Janus figure, the two, two-headed two um, Greek god that became the symbol for um, entertainment and movies and plays and things like that, where you had both the, the smiling part and the frying or you know, the smiling or frowning part. But this is an interesting shot. Nice concept. You did a really good job on it. I'd get rid of a little of this black on both sides. Here's your shot. It's right in here. That's what you want to concentrate on. So remember, find where the shot is and then anything else in the picture, anything that isn't really helping that, get rid of it. Make the viewer look at what you want them to look at. Don't give them any options if you can avoid it. Well, this is a really interesting motion catch. It almost looks like this guy has just punched this guy and is literally hit him hard enough to take him into the air. They appear to be on the same team, so I'm guessing that's not what happened. And what did just happen is that these guys have just won. But it is an interesting moment in time. Sometimes those happen and they can be really misleading. They're frozen in time. You don't know the whole action. And it can lead to a conclusion that may not be accurate. That's a problem that people out on the streets face all of the time. It was one of the reasons for resistance to a lot of body cameras for police is that sometimes, depending on the angle, depending on a lot of the variables that happen, that image may be accurate optically, but it's not accurate in terms of interpreting the action. So, And this is a good example of that. really looks like this guy just punched him out. But it's, it's a very good catch. Definitely froze the motion. Good job. Nice keyboard shot, the hands playing. Why, you can almost hear the music coming out of this. What kind of music is this? Um, can you make a guess? If, I'm assuming that you, the photographer, knows what was playing. But for us who don't know, what likely is coming out of this? Is it classical? Is it a ragtime piece? Is it a hymn? What What's really being played here? So there's a lot of interesting potential storytelling going on. I don't know what's creating these red highlights. But they're a little distracting. So I would get rid of those. And maybe darken this part down a little bit. And bring these keys in a little. Some very subtle, quiet touches to this. Because the shot is here. The hands on the keys. The rest of this is just supporting data that you may or may not decide you need all of it. Now we have a an interesting shot of someone uh, digging up uh, this tree or the roots around it, I guess. They're going to pull this tree out. Um, and this, I'm assuming, is probably a saw that's cutting off some of the heavy roots. It's a good catch, but it's also one that even though it's frozen, we don't know that it's frozen. If, in fact, he's sawing and there's motion there and you froze it, that's one story. The other is that he's just positioning it but hasn't actually pulled a trigger yet, so it really is a still shot. We have no way to know that from this image. This might be one that to tell the story better, we should see a little bit of blur in that saw. So be careful about that. This area, which is where the motion would normally be happening, really has to let us know. Is that motion or is it just a quiet moment in the action when the motion has stopped and you've captured that? Well, and here's the last one for this set. Again, a rider caught in midair coming over a little sand dune. The catch is good. 
Remember this with the first one, how the writer was caught in the air and was really clear what was going on? This writer is caught against all of this brush back here, which is really distracting. It's breaking up the detail. It'd almost be better if this were a shallow depth of field along with the freeze. So be careful what's in the background. That can really destroy your shot. From a motion standpoint, it's a good catch. From a depth of field standpoint, it could use some work. It could also use a little compositional work. He's moving in this direction, so I would come in. I don't need all this fence. I'd come in behind it and crop this down a little tighter down into there. Okay, this is part two we're done with. In a moment, we'll be on to part three.